So I'm working on a model railway controller and I wanted a capacitive touchscreen controller. So I ordered on AliExpress an ILI 9486 that comes with an FT6236 touchscreen controller. And I started writing the code and all was going well and then problems. So let's take a look. Right, this is the problem that I'm having. So if I press any of these buttons, they are actually trigger. I can see on my serial monitor that things are going on. So the code that deals with the touch is working. Now, when I touch these clock buttons, this is where you'll start to see the issue. So these buttons, when you touch them, are actually changing some of the screen output. So if you look in the top right hand corner of the screen, there is a X zero. So that is the current clock speed. If I touch this one, two, three, let's go back two, one. No problem at all. And then all of a sudden, bang, goes to a white screen. And the only way I can get it back is to press the reset button. So I'm now going to run the test and show you it from a serial monitor point of view. So I'm touching the top 10 buttons at the moment. And those bring out a loco function um, button. I've got some function change buttons, 15 and 16, change loco. Go down to the points button at the bottom. And now I'm going to start touching the clock buttons that change the clock speed. So these are them. These are button 19. All of a sudden I'm starting to see corruption. I'm going to button 18. Now the screen's gone white, so I can't see anything. But if I keep touching the screen, just guessing where buttons are, as you can see, the touch function is still working even though the screen function has failed. And that's what I need to try and figure out what is going on. So this was my video test. Because I started to get the weird effects on the screen, I decided to run certain functions really, really fast. The idea behind this was to see if somehow my um, screen building code was causing a problem but as you can see it's changing buttons extremely quick with no problem at all and if I reach out and touch the encoder you can see the speed also changes while all of this is running so from this little section I think I can be safe to say that the problem isn't due to my if you like the graphics part of the coding so stripping the board back, um, because I'm going to go back to the absolute basics to try and figure this out. We've got the ESP32. I've got a rotary encoder. I've got an EPRON chip and the screen. Uh, the screen is one of these um, capacitive touch screens. So uh, let's try and figure out what on earth is going on here. My initial thoughts are that the driver for the touch part of the screen is somehow conflicting with the driver for the display part of the screen, but I'm just not sure yet. So as I started my little investigation, my first thing was to go into my libraries and check that I've got the screen set up correctly. Now I'm using the TFT uh, ESPI library, used it many times, great library. And I've got the screen is an ILI 9486. Now, as soon as I came onto this, I just noticed below you've got an ILI 9488 and there's a warning. So as we look at the warning, it says, let's just scroll across. Um, so it says, do not connect the ILI 9488 display SDO to MISO if other devices share the SPI bus. TFDA, 
TFT SDO does not try state when CS is high. Now, that's a little bit beyond my pay grade. The guy who wrote the library obviously knows what he's talking about. I think this is a Bodner library, I think. But the thing that struck me immediately was I bought a 9486. But I bought it from AliExpress. Now let's bring up the page that I bought it from. Goodness knows why it's come up in this foreign currency. But this is the screen I bought. ILI 9486 FT 6236. That's what I've been working with. However, watch this. 9488 6236. 9488 6236. Hmm, he says. Now, obviously, there is nothing on these screens to show you what you bought. There's no numbers, nothing's visible. So, obviously, I'm working on the assumption that I've got a 9486. But how would I know? The pinouts are exactly the same. If you look at the photos, nothing changes. So just looking at that warning, there's that little alarm bell that's going off inside my head saying, have they sent me a 9488 instead? And therefore, because I've got other items plugged in, I could have a conflict. So bizarrely, that's where I'm going to start my investigation. By the way, for anyone who thinks I might be being a bit uh, nasty to AliExpress, this is a project that I did earlier. Uh, I bought an ILI 9481 SPI LCD screen, and that turned out to be a 9486. So this might little be a little bit of deja vu. We shall see. So what I've done now is I've stripped down the whole project to the breadboard, but I've only connected the display side of the screen. I've then made some alterations in my code, as I'll show you now. So the code alterations are absolutely minimal. Um, before I was using the 9486 and now all I've done is commented that out and I've put the ILI 9488 in. And as you saw in the bit of video before, the screen is displaying correctly. So I really am starting to get a little bit suspicious now that I may have a 9488 board. And now I've got to figure out how I get the touch to work with that board. So after some mucking about, I've actually got this thing to work in the most bizarre way. So uh, the clock is now running fine. Um, I've connected some other bits because now that it's starting to work, um, yeah, I just thought I'd experiment with more and see if I could break it. And I haven't been able to break it. So the solution, well, the solution was quite an odd one. In the... Uh, driver information, it had talked about not connecting the MISO pin of the display, which pit connects to pin 19. But if you disconnect that, <laughs> look at that, the screen doesn't work at all. So that idea went out the window. Um, what I finished up doing was disconnecting the MISO pin from the touch display. And as we can see, it seems to work absolutely fine. Um, I can't break it. I mean, by now, previously, it would be, well, you know, in error, the screen would be all over the place. Uh, so as you can see, from my point of view, I'm a very happy bunny at the moment, and what I'll now do is write up the connections so that I can show you exactly what is connected to what, in case you want to follow this example. So, as you can see, I've started to make some real progress on this. It's all back in its proper case. Um, for those who 
have followed previous videos, you'll know I'm a model railway fanatic. And this is a very special model railway controller. Um, so I've 3D printed the case for it to go in. Just got to do the back section. This is going to use the uh, ESP Now function. Uh, that way it will be a wireless uh, controller so I can just walk around. It actually uses a LiPo battery that recharges off a USB socket. So uh, all that circuitry is already built and ready to go. I've just got to build sort of the back of the case and fit everything in. So I'm going to continue with this project and hopefully uh, it'll be ready in the next day or two. So before I finish, this is the time you want to press pause if you want to uh, get all the pin numbers down. However, there is a link below the video to the Digital Town website that will tell that has all of this information on there. So these are the pins as marked on the board. These are the pins as marked on the ESP32 dev module. So if you want to build a project with touch and whatever, you know, this is the set the connections to use. Also on the Digital Town website, I've got the links to the uh, FT6236 library that I used and the library that was used for the screen display itself. So I hope that's all been useful to you. And uh, if it is, please click the like and subscribe. I'm hoping eventually that I'll manage to get to the dreaded thousand subscribers so that YouTube can start paying for some of the components. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, speak to you soon.